Hey everybody, Mr. Kolu back here again to continue some work on algebra with our buddy X here. And if you weren't here for the last video, I'd recommend you go ahead and uh, click this link here and check out our previous video because a lot of the topics are covered for the first time and I probably won't review them for you this time. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. We've got 2x plus 5 equals 13. And this looks a little different than the problems we looked at last time, right? Last time we might have seen a problem like this. Or we might have seen a problem like this. But it almost looks like they took those two problems and mashed them together. And we're going to solve them, kind of treating them in that way. Let's take a look at the scale. Alright, so let's model. We've got two x's over here, plus five ones. And then on this side we've got thirteen ones. Okay, so that doesn't look too bad. But how are we going to solve this? Well, ideally what I'd like is to have x on the left side there and have something else on the right. I don't know what, but that something else on the right will tell me what that x is. So, hmm. Well, first step here, let's get rid of those 1s on the left side. So I'll go ahead and subtract all five of those 1s from both sides. Okay, now, hmm, two x's, eight 1s here. Well, since I can't subtract, well, maybe I could divide. Because we've got 2x on one side and 8 on the other, so if we divide both sides by 2, that'll leave us with one remaining x. And you can see our solution right there, x equals 4. And if we take a look at the mathematics, you can see how we did that. First step we did was subtracted 5 from both sides. Okay, that made 2x equals 8. And then we went ahead and divided both sides by 2 and that gave us x equals 4. Here's another way to think about it. 2x plus 5 equals 13. Well, we want this to eventually say x equals 4, or x equals something. We don't know what that value is. But I've got two problems. I've got to deal with the times 2 out front and the plus 5 in the back. To deal with these guys, we should use their opposites. And now opposite is not a technical term. That's not going to help you out. Inverse might be even a little closer. But that's just the way I think about them. So when I see a plus 5, I think of the opposite, well, as a minus 5, and I want to subtract 5. And when that plus 5 and the minus 5 get together, they take care of each other. They cancel each other out. Now what about that 2 in front? Well, remember that 2, that 2 is really a times 2, okay? And a divided by 2, we'll go ahead and hop in there, cancel that out, and we'll get x equals some. Oh, wait a minute. What's that? What's that slash about? Oh. Okay, we did something wrong. What did, what did we do? Oh, right, our rule. What I do to one side, I must do to the other. And in fact, guys, I know I normally speak ill on this kind of thing, but I'm going to update that definition a little bit more to make it a bit more precise. So instead of what you do to one side, you must do to the other, let's think of it as when you change the value of one side, you must do the same operation to the other. Okay, why make this distinction? Well, you might do something to a side you might not do to the other side. For example, you might simplify one side when you can't simplify another side. just want to make it clear that when you're changing the value, when you're upsetting what's on those balances, that's when you have to do the operation to the other side. Okay, so what we forgot to do back there was we forgot to apply the same operations to the right side. So the first thing we did was we subtracted 5. Cool, that turns it to an 8. And the next thing we did was we divided by 2. And sure enough, that turns it into a 4. And now we're back in equilibrium. Okay, let's try one more way to think about this. Alright, imagine you've got a number 4. And that number 4 really loves to hide in his X disguise there. And once he gets in his X disguise, we have no idea who he is. We forget all about him. And that X disguise then gets placed inside of a box. A times 2 box, actually. And that times 2 box is then wrapped by plus 5 wrapping paper. Okay? Now, this is a little weird, but stick with me. So an equation is sort of like a magic mirror. Well, what do I mean by that? We can hold up our problem, our half of our problem, our expression, our wrapped item, and we can see the same item reflected in that mirror. Uh, Mr. Kolu? Uh, Joe, just, just calm down. I'm, I'm working here. So once we go ahead and unwrap and remove that plus 5 wrapping, and we remove that times 2 pizza box, the magic equation mirror will show us what x actually is. It can actually see right through x's disguise. We just have to get through all the things around the x to see what that x is worth. 
And this was a relatively simple algebra problem. We only had a times 2 box and a plus 5 wrapping. Some problems are more complicated. They might take that whole package and stick it inside a 2 times the quantity briefcase. And they might put that briefcase in the trunk of a minus 7 hatchback. And they might take that minus 7 hatchback carrying the 2 times the quantity briefcase with the plus 5 wrapping in the times 2 box and drive it into the ocean. Uh, Mr. Colu- I know, I know, Joe. I'm, I'm almost there. Okay, the point is that once this negative 7 hatchback rests on the bottom of the ocean, we could come along later on, fish it out, pull it up to the surface, put it in front of that magic equation mirror, and as long as we're doing the correct operations, we could remove all of those trappings and find out exactly what that X is. Uh, Mr. Kalu, uh, this is just confusing. What's this about? Well, you see, Joe, coming up with ways to visualize algebra is a problem that's challenged math teachers for hundreds of years. I'm trying to give you multiple different ways to think about algebra so that you can pick one that works best for you and go with that one. All right, let's take a look at a similar example. We've got 4x minus 7 equals 17. Okay, so we've got to deal with that 4 out front and that negative 7 in the back. So let's deal with that minus 7, and to take care of a negative 7, we're going to need to add 7 to both sides. And that'll give us 4x equals 24. Then we have that 4 out front, so we're going to divide both sides by 4, which is going to give us x equals 6, which is our solution. Okay? Not too bad. Let's take a look at a different type. Okay, this one looks a little different here. We've got 1 half times the quantity x plus 3 equals 3. Well, this one looks kind of scary. But let's bring it over to the scale and we'll model it. Okay, we've got x plus 3 on the left-hand side. Well, is that right? If we look back on the equation, we've got that 1 half sitting out front. So let's take 1 half of x and 1 half of 3 ones. Makes sense? Okay, cool. And then on the right-hand side, we have 3 ones. And those guys are dropping in, and we finally got a balanced equation. All right, well, how are we going to deal with this? Um, hmm, let's take a look back at the equation. So we've got 1 half times quantity x plus 3 equals a third. I know I have to deal with what's outside of those parentheses first. I could distribute it if I wanted to. But sometimes it's easier just to deal with the coefficient right out front. So we've got 1 half. What's going to get rid of a 1 half? Well, that's multiplying by 2 over 1, which is the same thing as 2. So basically, we're doubling both sides. So let's go ahead and multiply by 2 on both sides. Cool. But now I've got x and 3, and I've got equal 6 on the other side. So I want to take care of those three ones on the left. And I'll do that by subtracting. OK, minus 3 from both sides. And you can see our solution right there. x equals 3. Neat. All right, let's go take a look at the numbers here. So what did we do first? We multiplied both sides by 2. That gave us x plus 3 equals 6. And then we subtracted 3 from both sides, giving us x equals 3. OK? Not too bad, right? If you just think about them in pieces and follow through the steps, you're not going to have too much of a problem. OK, here's another one. Let's see if we can get through this. We've got 1 over 4 times the quantity x minus 5 equals 6. All right, so let's deal with that 1 over 4 out front by multiplying by its reciprocal which is 4 over 1, or 4. So that cancels out that 1 fourth out front, so we've got x minus 5 equals 24. And to deal with that minus 5, we're going to add 5 to both sides, leaving us with x equals 29. Remember, if you think about algebra as just a bunch of little problems put together, follow the steps. You won't have too much of a problem. Okay, let's take a look at a different example. All right, now this one is different. This one has 4x plus 3 equals 3x plus 6. Well, that's, we got x's on both sides. That's kind of weird. Well, let's model it, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we've got 4x's on this side, plus 3 ones. And on the right side, we've got 3x's, plus 6 ones. Okay, well, let's deal with those ones sitting on top first, huh? So let's subtract 3 from both sides. Cool. Now I've still got x's on both sides, so let's try to see if we can remove some of the x's from the right and see how that affects on the left. So let's remove all three of those x's on the right. Remember, we have to do the same to both sides. 
So we've subtracted 3 from both sides, and look what we're left with. x equals 3. Cool, huh? All right, so let's look at the math there. What did we do? Well, in the first step, we got rid of that 3 by subtracting 3 from both sides, which left us with 4x equals 3x plus 3. And then we went ahead and subtracted 3x from both sides, and that left us with x equals 3. Not too bad, huh? It looks scary, but once we go ahead and move the numbers around just to get it set up, it's basically done. Okay, cool. Let's check out another one. Hmm, this one looks a little different. 4x minus 2 equals 2x. Okay, well, let's go ahead and model it. We've got 4x on the left side. Then we've got a minus 2, so we're going to have to have two of those negative 1 balloons. Okay, and on the right-hand side, we have two x's. And that balances us out. All right, well, let's get rid of those negative one balloons. Those really, really bother me. So remember, to get rid of a negative one, we need to add a one. And when those two combine, they cancel each other out. Okay, so that's plus one, plus two. Notice we're unbalanced again because we need to make sure we do the exact same thing to the other side. Add two. Okay, now we're balanced out. We kind of just moved that negative 2 from one side to the other, and it became positive. Hmm, interesting. All right, well, let's deal with the 2x on the right-hand side there and subtract 2x's from both sides. Easy enough. That leaves us with 2x equals 2. Since we have 2x, let's go ahead and divide both sides by 2. Okay, and look what that leaves us with. 1x equals 1. Pretty simple. Again, if you think about these things in pieces, even the most complicated problem is not all that complicated. All right, let's take a look at the math real quick. First thing we did was add 2 to both sides to cancel out that negative 2. That gave us 4x equals 2x plus 2. Then we subtracted 2x from both sides to get rid of that 2x on the right. That left us with 2x equals 2. And since we had a 2x, we're going to ahead and divided both sides by 2, leaving us with x equals 1. Not too bad, huh? Okay, let's take a look at another one. 5x plus 4 equals x plus 3. Let's deal with that plus 4 first by subtracting 4 from both sides. That leaves us with 5x equals x minus 1. Let's deal with the x on the right-hand side by subtracting x from both sides. That's going to leave us with 4x equals negative 1. Since we've got that 4 in front of the x, let's divide both sides by 4. That's going to give us x equals negative 1 fourth. Okay? Just that simple. No matter which metaphor you prefer for understanding algebra, remember that it's all about preserving balance and maintaining the integrity of the equation. If you follow the rules, you can't have too many problems. Well, that's all for this time. Catch you guys next time for some more Kolu math.